So we have learned about the number E, and let's learn more about the graph of the number E. So if we were to graph E to the X, we can pick out very specific points, just like we did with graphing any other function. Um, remember that E is approximately 2.718 two eight one eight two eight four so on and so forth okay. so I can do this by plugging in points the very first point that I would plug in is zero because anything to a zero exponent would give me one and so my ordered pair would be zero one if I were to plug in 1 to this, e to the first power is pretty much what e is, and so that's approximately 2.7. If I were to plug in 2 to this, that would give me e squared, so 2.7 squared. You could very easily type this in your calculator. e to the second is 7.38, or approximately 7.4. And if I wanted to plug in negative values, negative 1, e to the negative 1. And if we're here, I can type in e to the negative 2. So e to the negative 1 gives me approximately 0.4. e to the negative 2 gives me approximately 0.14. And so I think if I plot all of these, I should have a good idea of what this graph should look like. And notice it takes the same shape as every one of our other exponential notations. And so here I have the graph of e to the x. And you can always graph this using your graphing calculator or your Desmos app or any other application. And so since I have my graphing calculator up here, I can just type in e to the x. And I do that by selecting e, just the same place, and I'm going to do e to the x. Make sure I graph it on my standard window, zoom 6. And so we can see the horizontal asymptote there. And then we can see the same basic shape of every other exponential function. All right, to talk more about this, we know the domain does not change from any other exponential function. Same with the range, same with our asymptote, and same with our intercept. Okay, but we don't just want to graph E, we want to graph all variations of E. And so we're going to transform these. So my first one is e to the negative x. So what does that really mean? Well, we convert this into a fraction if we want to, or we can use our transformation information. I have a negative. A negative means that I'm going to reflect my graph. Since it's on the inside, it's going to reflect it horizontally, or it's going to reflect it over the y-axis. And so if I were to discuss the shape of just e to the x, I'm going to draw that here. So here's my e to the x. What is it going to do if I reflect it over the y-axis? I'm going to flip it like this. So my intercept's going to stay the same. I'm going to see my asymptote happening on the right rather than the left. And each of these values over here gets reflected over the y-axis. And so I see this here. Okay. All of my information stays the same. Okay. What about e to the x plus 3? Well, I'm on the inside of the exponent, so everything is going to happen horizontally. And addition is a shift. The inside we think opposite of normal, so this is actually going to shift it left three units. 
So again, if I take my values that I'm used to seeing for e to the x, I would just shift those values left 3. And so this would be the shape of e to the x plus 3. My domain stays the same. I can still plug in every x value. Range, horizontal asymptote are still the same because all of my values are above 0. My y-intercept might be a little bit more complicated here. I just note that I need to plug in my 0 for x. So f of 0 gives me e to the 0 plus 3, or e to the 3. So I can type in e to the 3rd on my calculator. And so my y-intercept is going to be approximately here, 20.05. If I wanted the exact value, I would actually have to keep it as e to the third. So this is the exact y-intercept. If I wanted the approximate, we just said it would be 20 point, oh, what was it, 5? Oh, 085, so oh, 09. Okay, a couple more of these. e to the negative 0.5x. And so I suggest that you pause the video and try and do this one on your own. So this is on the inside. I have two things here. I know the negative is going to remake it reflect over the y-axis. The 0.5 times x is going to either make it stretch or shrink. It's on the inside, so a small number is actually going to make it stretch horizontally by the reciprocal of it. The reciprocal of 0.5 or the reciprocal of 1 half is by 2 units. Okay, so let me get my basic one up here again. So I need to reflect it. So this one here, if I start with my y-intercept, my reflection is going to stay the same, and my stretching is going to stay the same. So that point stays there. This one, if I were to reflect it, 2.7, if I were to reflect it, would go over here. And then if I were to stretch it, so normally it would be at 1, it's going to go to 2. This one, I flip it, which is going to go over here, and I stretch it by 2, which is going to go over there. This value, which is going to reflect over here, is going to go over there. And so this is going to be my e to the negative 0.5x. You're always more than welcome to graph it to double check it. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you want to compare that to the original, that would be fine, too. So my red is going to be the original, and my blue is going to be the transformed graph. So here's my blue graph that's transformed. Notice it was reflected over the y-axis, and it is wider than what we typically would think it would be. And so there's my red, there's my original graph. So I think we've graphed that one correctly. Domain, no difference. Range, no difference. Horizontal asymptote, no difference. And the y-intercept, also no difference. Okay, I have one more of these. This one's quite complicated because we can see there's lots of transformations here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can figure out all of these transformations on your own. All right, I'm going to choose to rewrite this just to make sure, just to make it a little bit easier to see. 
Doing it from left to right, the negative on the outside is going to make it reflect over the x-axis or vertically. The negative here is going to make it reflect horizontally or reflect it over the y-axis. The 2, since it's multiplied, is going to make it shrink, since I'm on the inside, horizontally by 2. And then the 1 on the outside, since it's added, is going to make it shift up 1. So getting my basic graph on here again, I'm going to take each of these values and do this. So here, if I reflect it over the x-axis, that gives me this. If I reflect it over the y-axis, same thing. If I shrink it horizontally, it stays there, and then I shift it up one unit. Okay, now if I look at this point, and if I reflect it over my x-axis, it goes here. Then my y-axis reflection goes here. And then I smush it, puts it here. That's going to shrink it horizontally. And then I have to shift it up one unit. And so there is my shifting up one unit. Okay. My next point, if I reflect it over both of my axes, goes here and then here. If I smush it, it goes here. And then moving it up one unit goes there. All right. Now let me pick a point on the left. So this one. If I reflect it both ways, goes here and here. If I smush it horizontally, goes here. And then if I shift it up a unit, it goes there. And so maybe this is enough to give you the shape of the graph. If not, you can do this with more than with more points than what I have done it here. But this is going to give me my graph here. So the yellow, so you can see all these colors. But if I wanted to really define it precisely, it would look like this here. Okay, so lots of my characteristics change. My domain is still negative infinity to infinity. My range, now it goes down forever, so that goes there. And I see that I have a horizontal asymptote at y equal 1. So that's going to fill in both my horizontal asymptote and my um, range. My y-intercept looks like it happens right at the origin. So that's going to be 0, 0. If you want to double check that, you can plug in 0 here. e to the 0 gives me 1. This all gives me 1. And so 1 minus 1 gives me 0. So my y-intercept is good. If you want to double check this, I encourage you to do so. Let's go ahead and graph this in our calculator. So I have 1 minus e to the negative 2x. And so the blue should be my transformed, and the red will be my original. So here's my transformed blue, and of course my red is the original. So I believe that we've transformed it correctly, and we have everything good to go. All right. And last, I'm going to do one more video over other applications of exponential functions.